All right, tonight's um, video is going to be over limiting reactants and excess reactants. And this tends to give a lot of students some difficulty. So make sure that you're actually paying attention and listening to this. There's no real tricks to this. Um, it's not like a really hard concept, but you absolutely need to um, understand the process in order to do it. So there's not, it's, it's actually just the application of stoichiometry. Um, there's no new steps to stoichiometry, but it's using stoichiometry to answer a question. So what is a limiting reactant? Well, limiting reactant is a reactant, so it's a starting substance that's actually responsible for a chemical reaction reaching completion. So what's really key is that the limiting reactant is the reactant that runs out first, and you will have zero moles of it at the end, so you will run out completely. So what does it do? It limits, it's the reactant that limits how much you can make. So I always give the scenario I have um, let's say I'm making a sandwich, a ham sandwich, and I put one slice of ham and two slices of bread and to make my ham sandwich. And in my house, I have 500 pieces of bread and I have three slices of ham. Well, this is a very extreme case, but how many sandwiches can I make and which one limits how much I can make? Well, that would be I could make three sandwiches because the three slices of ham limits how much I can produce. Okay, so it would be the ham would be the limiting reactant and the bread would be the excess reactant, meaning that I have extra of it at the end of everything. Okay, so what we're going to do is you're going to do a problem and it's very easy to do these problems, but you better make sure you understand um, how to do it. I'm telling you right now on the test, this is where students uh, points do they just lose a lot because they don't go to the right thing. So first thing is that you need to write down what you know underneath the reaction so you can identify basically that it's going to be a limiting reaction problem. So when I have 0.5 moles of aluminum, so I'm going to change my color. So I've got 0.5 moles of aluminum and I'm reacting it with 0.72 moles of iodine. Iodine. The following reaction results. Okay. So I've got that. It then asked me, what is the limiting reactant? I actually can tell that it's going to be a limiting reactant problem because I give you two reactant amounts. So because I'm giving you two reactant amounts, I know that one of them is probably going to limit the reaction and one is going to have a little bit left over at the end of the reaction. So typically those are going to be your limiting reactant um, ones. So how do you do a limiting reactant problem? Very easily. What you're going to do is two stoichiometry problems, and you can convert your amount of your reactants to one of your products. In this case, it's very obvious what we're going to go to, which product, uh, because we only have one. If there are multiple products, as far as answering the limiting reactant problem, it does not matter. But as far as trying to be using your time effectively, read all of the problems for that example and go to that react or that product. So in this case, I'm asking another question about how many grams of aluminum iodide I am forming. So let's pretend there was like another reactant of some sort. If I'm asking a question here about aluminum iodide, that's the one I'm going to go to. Okay. So how do you do the limiting reactant problems? Let's just do one. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go from um, write down both of your amounts. So I've got 0.5 moles of aluminum. And my second stoic problem, which I'll do in purple, is going to be 0.72 moles of iodine. Okay. So now what you're going to do is you convert both of your reactants to the same product. Okay. So I'm going to first convert my aluminum into my aluminum iodide. So how I'm going to do that, I'm going to go from moles of aluminum to moles of aluminum iodide. And I'm going to use my balanced reaction of the coefficients to for 2 and 2. When I multiply that out, I get 0 0.50 moles of aluminum iodide. This is one way that you can do it. You can just go to moles of whatever product you're trying to go to. Um, typically in the in the thing, I will go to whatever the question is asked about later. And uh, for example, too, I'm going to go do that straight away. So we've got 0.72 moles of iodine, and now I'm going to convert and see if I use 0.72 moles of iodine, how many moles of aluminum iodide it could make. So I'm going to go moles of alum of iodine, and I'm going two moles of aluminum iodide. Okay, once again, using the uh, balanced 
reaction for your coefficients, you get 2 over 3. And so for this one, I get 0.48 moles of aluminum iodide. So when I, oh, that should be a 3. So if I put in 0.72 moles of aluminum iodide, I can make 0.48 moles of, if I put in, sorry, 0.72 moles of iodine, I can make 0.48 moles of aluminum iodide. If I put in 0.5 moles of aluminum, I can make 0.50 moles of aluminum iodide. It doesn't seem like there's much of a difference, and a lot of times we'll have a little bit more significant of a difference as far as products go, but when you are doing this, you always go with the smaller number because you will run out of that reactant before you um, can make any more. So back to the ham sandwich, I can't make my 250 sandwiches. I can only make three because I ran out of the ham first. So in this case, what's my limiting reactant? It's whatever makes the smallest amount of product. So in this case, my 0.72 moles of aluminum iodide is my limiting reactant. Okay, so now I, I ask you how many grams of aluminum iodide can be formed? Well, I know that I can make 0.48 moles, and you always go once again for the most you can make is actually the smallest amount of product. Why? Because you ran out of reactant before the other guy um, ran out. So you can only go with the smallest amount. So how do I go from moles of aluminum iodide? Because I know I can make 0.48 moles of aluminum iodide. I can go from moles two grams using the molar mass for aluminum iodide, which is, when you calculate it out, is 407.7. So when you multiply this out, you can make 195.7 grams, which is equal to, rounded to two sig figs, 2.0 times 10 to the second grams. So my limiting reactant, once you identify your limiting reactant, that's the number you're gonna use for every single uh, reaction from that because that's going to limit everything after that. So we've got 200 grams approximately of aluminum iodide that I could form. Then it asks how many moles of excess reactant will remain. So when you do your excess reactant and we ask you for information about that, what you want to do is you want to convert your known um, limiting reactant, which is this 0.72 moles of iodine, and you want to figure out how many moles, in this case, you could have gone to grams, but they're asking specifically about moles, how many moles of aluminum or how many moles of your excess reactant did you use up? So if I use 0.72 moles of iodine, by doing this stoichiometry conversion, I am going to figure out how many moles of aluminum I used up. So to do that, you're going to use your molar ratio which is a two to three ratio. And when you multiply that out, you get 0.48 moles of aluminum. So if I use 0.7 moles of iodine, I used up 0.48 moles of aluminum. Well, looking at your math, I started with 0.50 moles of aluminum. I used up 0.48 moles of aluminum. So therefore, I have 0 0.02 moles of aluminum left over. Because each of these is in the hundredth position, you can round your answer to the hundredth position because this is subtraction. And so we would keep it as 0 0.02 moles of aluminum. So after everything's said and done, I would still have 0 0.02 moles of aluminum kind of floating around. All right, let's try to do another example problem. So the next one is using aluminum um, sulfide. So it tells me I've got, I put in 15 grams of aluminum sulfide and nine grams of water, okay? And I want until the limiting reactant is used up. Then I'm asked, what is the limiting reactant? So I can either go to aluminum um, hydroxide or the H2S, okay? So which one will I choose? Well, it doesn't matter which one you go to, but to save time, I then ask in B how much H2S can be formed. So I'm gonna do my product. I'm gonna figure out how many of H2S grams can I form. Now in this case, it doesn't matter. I could stop at moles to identify the limiting reactant and then um, moles of H2S and go with the lowest number, but I tend to just always go straight to grams. Um, it's just how I traditionally do it. So I'm gonna do that this one. You can choose either way, it does not matter. Okay, so we're going to first do the 15 grams of aluminum sulfide. So when I put this guy in, 
okay? How many grams of H2S can I form? So all it is is from a grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams, normal stoichiometry problem. So we're going to go from grams to moles using the molar mass of aluminum sulfide. So that molar mass is 150.3 grams. Now I'm at moles of aluminum sulfide, and now I'm ready to go to moles um, of H2S. So you're going to use your balanced reaction. So that would be a 3 to 1 ratio. And now I'm choosing to go to grams. Once again, you can stop at moles as long as you stop at the same product and you stop at the same unit. So when we compare what, how much Al2S we, S3 we could make versus H2O, we are comparing moles of H2S to moles of H2S or grams of H2S to grams of H2S. In this case, I'm just going to go to grams because I know I have to go to grams for B. So I'm going to do H2S here. And then we've got our grams, which is 34.1 grams of H2S, which is its molar mass. And when we do that, I get 10.2 grams of H2S. So what that means is that if I put in 15 grams of aluminum sulfide, I can get out 10.2 grams of H2S, or that would be hydrosulfuric acid. All right, so now we're going to do 9 grams of water, and once again, you need to convert the exact to the exact same product. So because I did to this one for my first one, I have to go to H2S for my second one. So using the molar mass of water, which is 18 grams of water for every one mole of water, now I'm at moles of water. Now I need to get to moles of H2S. So moles of H2S has to go on the bottom. I mean on the top. And moles of H2S has to go on top. So using the ratio, it's a 3 to 6 ratio. And now I'm ready to go to mole, from moles of H2S to grams of H2S. So moles of H2S is 1. And then it's 34.1 grams of H2S. So multiply that out, you get 8.525 grams of H2S. Notice, I'm going to outline this, but notice the last part of it, this part on both problems is always going to be the same because you're going to the exact same substance. Okay, so the ending part for limiting reactants should always be the same conversions. All right. So it then asks, which one is the limiting reactant? Well, one could produce 10.2 grams. That's if I used aluminum sulfide. And the other could produce 8.5 grams. And that was with I used my water. So you're going to choose the lowest amount because, remember, you're only as good as your weakest amount. And the weakest one produces the least amount, which would be your water. So this is your limiting reactant, which means that this guy is your excess reactant. Another term that you're going to need to know is that whatever produced your least amount is known as your theoretical yield or max amount. So if I ask you for the max amount, you actually are choosing the lowest out of the two options. Okay. All right. So when it asks you how many grams of H2S could be formed, I'm going to go with the lowest amount, which is also known as the max amount or the theoretical yield. So that would be um, rounded. It would be 8.5 grams of H2S. Why? Because there's two sig figs and two sig figs. So that would be the answer. And see, I, I didn't need to reshow any work because I already showed all the work up there. So you don't really need to repeat yourself. If you did it in the first step, you definitely don't need to reshow it in the second step. All right. And then how many grams of excess reactant will remain? Well, what was my excess reactant? That would be the aluminum sulfide. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did on the previous page. I'm going to convert my limiting reactant which is 9 grams of H2O, and I am going to convert it into grams of aluminum sulfide because that's what I want to see. If I put in 9 grams, how many grams of aluminum sulfide have I used up? So you're going to do your grams of water, and you're going to convert it to moles of water using the molar mass of water. Now I'm going to go from moles of water to moles of aluminum sulfide. So it's one mole of aluminum sulfide for every six moles of water. Once again, I got that number from the um, balanced reaction in the coefficients. Now I'm ready to go from moles of aluminum sulfide 
two grams of aluminum sulfide, which is 150.3 grams, and that is its molar mass. And when I do that, I get 12.525 grams of aluminum sulfide, which means that if I used up all nine grams of water, I was able to produce or I was able to use up only 12.525 grams of aluminum sulfide. I started with 15 grams and then subtracting, I used up 12.525 grams, which means that I have 2.475 grams left over. But because this highest number is in the ones position, I need to round my final answer in the ones position because we are subtracting it. So how many grams would be left over? Two grams of aluminum sulfide would be left over. All right, hopefully you have a basic understanding of these problems. They follow the exact same format over and over and over again. You just need to get familiar with the, um, the terminology. Once again, you use both reactants, convert them to the same product amount. Either they're all in moles for the, uh, the same product, or you could go to grams of the same product, but they need to be the same product and the same unit for that product. Once you get to there, you identify the least amount, okay? From there, whatever produced the least amount, that would be your limiting reactant. The amount that was made would be known as your maximum amount or your theoretical yield, meaning that's the best you can possibly do. The other guy that's not the limiting reactant is known as your excess reactant, okay? To calculate how much remaining of your excess reactant, you figure out, based off your limiting reactant, how much of your excess reactant was used. From there, you subtract how much you started with of your excess, subtract how much was used, and that's how much you have left over. All right, have a great evening. Um, you'll probably want to listen to these again or do a lot of practice problems in class so that you have a really solid understanding of this problem. Because once again, this is the one that students miss a ton of points. Why? Because they go to the wrong things. But if you look at this, look at how much work it is. And if you look at how points are divided up, this is a lot, this is a big point question. So make sure you have a full understanding of this process. Have a great evening.